I'm looking for a job. I've made up my mind to find a career that I learn and grow into. Who am I? I'm a hard worker. And I'm thinking that television news might just be something I love as well as something I happen to be good at. You have to make the money to buy a ticket! We are back with another interesting movie recap. Before starting, I would like to request all of you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Recap for the 2014 crime thriller film Nightcrawler that I'll be sharing today. Enjoy your video while enabling captions. In the metropolis of Los Angeles, it is late at night. Louis Bloom entered a railroad yard illegally in an effort to remove a chain link fence. He is approached by an officer who asks to see identification. Lou maintains his composure and displays it to the man before attacking and killing him. Later, Lou sells the damaged fence to the owner of the scrapyard while attempting to haggle for a better price. He then inquires about employment, since he is available to begin right away. If you want to win the lottery, you must have the cash to purchase a ticket, is his catchphrase. He is rejected by the owner, who says she won't hire a thief. Lou is being passed by a couple police vehicles. He stops to observe what they are. Looking into, a car is on fire, and nightcrawlers who document violent crimes at night for money arrive in a van driven by Joe Loader. Lou observes the Loader filming, as two guys remove a woman from the car. Lou questions the loader about the task as he arrives. It's a burning of a job, the loader says. When Lou asks if they're hiring, the loader replies no. The following day, Lou steals a bike off the beach and takes it to a pawn shop. The store owner will only give credit up to $700, but Lou requests $800 so he may purchase a camcorder and a police scanner. He uses these to listen to local incident reports. He approaches several crime scenes, but the cops tell him to leave. He is able to capture some clear, gruesome video of a man who was shot to death following a carjacking Lou and another nightcrawler are turned away by the cops, the latter who yells at Lou for sabotaging his shot. Lou listens in as the man phones his employer and learns how much money he expects to gain from the clip. Lou visits the Channel 6 newsroom and meets Nina Romina, the news director. He plays her and another producer from the station in the video, which features clear images of the deceased man and the medics working to revive him. Lou only receives $250 from the video. He again tries to beg for a job or an internship position, but to no avail despite his attempts to go much higher. Rick, a young man, is the subject of Lou's internship interview, appearing to be in charge of a major news organization. Rick is basically unemployed, seeking employment, and has minimal prior experience in this line of work. Rick casually responds, yes, when Lou asks if he has a GPS-enabled phone. He is immediately hired by Lou, who promises to pay him $30 every night. Lou insists that Rick tell him the directions while they search for occurrences. Lou drives like a lunatic and worries Rick. They arrive at the scene of a house fire too late because he mistakenly gives him the wrong directions. Lou is enraged with Rick, since the victim has already been brought away by paramedics. Around a shooting in a suburban home, people have gathered. Lou enters through the back door and enters the kitchen, where he rearranges the photos on the refrigerator to draw attention to the gunshot holes and a photograph of the neighbors speaking to police. Nina adores the video, but Frank claims she still uses it since it appears as though Lou broke in. Lou and Rick eventually succeed in obtaining a ton of fresh footage of terrifying situations. As Lou proceeds to sell Nina's stories with headlines like Toddler Stab and Drunk Mom Smashes Biker, he makes an emotional speech about how he came up with his business concept and how he had intended to establish himself. Nina nearly looks moved by his speech, with two anchors from Nina's station are about to report Report on one of the instances that Lou captured on video. Lou stands by Nina. He cites a Mexican eatery and extends an invitation to Nina to join him there. Nina declines, not wanting to jeopardize their working connection. But Lou seems to be implying that if she declines, he'll stop giving her nice footage. Lou gets discovered by a loader, who offers him a position on his squad in exchange for some quality video. Even though loader perseveres, Lou declines. Lou, however, firmly rejects him, which enrages the loader. Nina comes to the Mexican restaurant with Lou. She claims that this is only a courtesy date, despite the fact that he makes it apparent that he wants more than a business relationship. She needs him just as much as he needs her, he says, noting that his station has the lowest ratings in the neighborhood. Due to Loader and his gang getting there before them, Lou and Rick miss another occurrence. They left Lou with a shoddy video of a corona stabbing. Nina is furious with him. Channel 2 receives the full splendor of the loader's coverage. Lou shatters the bathroom mirror in his rage. He stops his van by going to the leader's residence. Later on, this results in the loader driving the vehicle into a post. Rick and Lou arrive just in time for Lou to get footage of the loader choking on his own blood as he is taken away in a trolley. When Lou and Rick stumble upon a gunshot and subsequent break-in at a large home, they get a big break. Lou notices two males leaving the area. 
He walks inside the house and records the bodies in each room. Lou walks around the sufferer who is on the ground gasping for air. He makes it crystal apparent to Nina that he is now in charge. While Nana directs them, the station's anchors discuss the footage. Frontier and Lieberman, two investigators, show up at Lou's door and ask him about the video and whether he saw the two men. Although he doesn't provide a detailed description of the individuals, he does say that they were traveling in an SUV. Lou brings Rick to find the murderers and call the police. If Rick wants to continue joining in on these kinds of operations, he needs to be paid more. He humbly requests $75 per night despite Lou's assertion that he could have gone higher. The murderer shoots himself after pointing his revolver towards the police. Lou records his demise before documenting Rick as he expires. Rick claims that Lou knew the killer was still alive, and Lou argues that he did so because he was afraid Rick would jeopardize the entire operation. Dead is Rick. Lou shows Nina all of this, and she is mesmerized by the graphic details. Nina refuses to turn up the cassettes when Detective Frontier arrives at the station and asks to see them since they contain evidence. Having suppressed information from them, because he knew what the killer's appearances were. Frontier subsequently quizzed Lou. He is also unaffected by Rick's passing. He doesn't waver, though, and is given the green light to continue walking. Frank approaches Nina and claims that given the quantity of cocaine found inside, the break-in at the house was actually a narcotics robbery. He claims that although Nina is concentrating on the vehicle chase and accident, this is the true story. Frank comments that she reminds him of Lou. She responds that Lewis motivated them to aim higher. With the help of three interns and two news vans, Lou has already developed video production news. He prepares them for their assignments and adds that he won't require them to perform any duties that he himself won't perform. After that, he leads them into the nights so that he may take more pictures of what the crowd is most interested in. How did you find the film? I'm interested in your remarks down below. I appreciate everyone's interest. Don't forget to subscribe until the next recap.